We were asked by the Open Identity Exchange to run a um, requirements gathering around identity needs in the private sector. Now that gov.uk Verify is going live, uh, having had a year or more of being in beta, uh, now we're looking at how the wider market will be able to adopt identity services. So um, that's the important thing about the, engaging now with the market to understand what their needs are for identity services so that we consider how it's going to get rolled out into the private sector um, based around the market's needs. We ran a series of workshops and they were sector specific workshops. Those workshops were designed to really bring everyone's understanding of identity assurance up to the same level in order so that they could respond to the survey. Um, and those were across the series of sectors. So we had one with the gambling industry, we had one with the IT industry, we had one with financial services and also one with retail. We sent out about 100 plus surveys and we also did a bunch of telephone interviews as well. And we took a qualitative approach to the responses. So we brought all that information in and we started to gather those responses together so that we can start to give some headlines as to what the majority of the industry is saying. We sent it out to 100 plus contacts. The highest um, response rate we had was from financial services. We had the second highest response rate was from a group that we called Other. So those covered people who were in the IT industry, people like consultants, uh, individual organisations. The next we had was the sharing economy and the gambling companies. Then we had telecoms and retail. Overall, we had 80 organisations response. So that's a pretty good response rate in relation to the amount of surveys we actually sent out. 54 of those organisations responded to those in full and 26 were partial. So these are some of the brands of the organisations that said that we could use their logo. We asked some questions generically about the market. We asked some questions around standards and those standards were relating to the good practice guides um, which are the open standards that GovVerify adheres to. Information and questions around certification, so the government identity providers need to be certified. Is that something that the private sector thinks is valuable? Do they think is it important? So these are all you know, really key questions to ask of the private sector. Brand, so um, you know, Gov Verif UK Verifiers is a brand. Is that the right brand to be used in this context? What other brands do people think could be used in this context? What sort of brand you know, is a brand actually needed to cover you know, cross-industry trust um, and a cross-industry um, federated identity scheme? We asked questions around privacy relating to the nine privacy principles um, that GovVerify adheres to. And then we also asked some questions around cross-industry. So in relation to the market, we asked what the most important characteristics, if there was, you know, let's look forward and we have a fully operated, um, operating identity federated market in the future, what would be the key characteristics for that market? Now, these are the three top answers. Ease of use, security and trust. Then we asked some questions around opportunities. So what would be the opportunities for a fully working identity market? The top answer was for governments, better customer experience and also shared standards. So those are the opportunities that people stated. Then we asked about barriers to the market. Top barrier was lack of access to data and both government and banking data was cited in that. Lack of trust and confidence and also cost. We asked people the question, do you think it would be valuable to have a cross-sector brand to, to effectively um, manage the trust. And 66% of people thought it would be very valuable. Now, when we asked them the question specifically about the Gov UK Verify brand, it absolutely polarised opinion. So we had a whole bunch of people saying, we actually think it would create more trust. And we had a whole bunch of people saying the exact opposite. So um, the top answer was actually that people thought that the, Ver the Verify brand would create more trust. If we um, wanted to take the majority of answers, so 50% plus, the rest of the answers that made up the majority actually said no, they didn't think that it would do. So it completely polarised opinion. So we do not have a clear view on what the brand would be. 
Then we asked the questions around privacy. People had a really good level of understanding of the privacy principles. 81% of people said that it was very, very important to have a set of privacy principles to adhere to. And the existing privacy principles, nine privacy principles, 76% of people said were very relevant. So, and this was a really clear outcome for us. So then we asked some questions around cross-industry. Should we continue this investigation around cross-industry? Is it something people even want to do within those organisations? 82% said that they did want to and they thought it would be really valuable to continue with that. So then we asked them why. Top three opportunities, improve customer experience, ensure portability and reduce fraud. Top challenges, different market segments and requirements, cross-sector trust, liability and competition. Okay, so now I'm just going to move briefly on to some of the user testing. As I said, this is really, really, really early days, so I'm not presenting this as being like the absolute or anything. There have been five users that have gone through this process to date. But essentially what we're doing is we, you know, we've looked at the market from an organisation perspective and said, hey, you know, industry, what do you think? Well, what we need to do now is understand what users want because we might think this is the best idea ever, but actually if the users don't want to do this, then it's pointless. And um, this person had an existing digital identity. It had been created in the context of Gov UK Verify. But then they were asked to use that existing digital identity they had to unlock a savings transaction. So I don't have to actually go through the hassle of actually scanning my passport okay. or, or my utility bills mm -hmm. and attaching those and sending those as well. So it, it is actually a much simpler process. Okay. So would you recommend that yes. to anyone to create a digital identity to manage this kind of... Yes. Yeah. I, mean, I think if you're, if you're active, I mean, if you're actually sort of an active, an active investor or saver, um, it's, uh, it, it's going to save you time um, and it's an easy process. So, in conclusion, really early days, but users starting to indicate that they might see some benefit in, in doing this. Organisations want to continue investigating it, so we need to think about how we take this forward and how, you know, what parts of what's already been built through um, Gov UK Verify, what will be reused, what potentially wouldn't be reused, you know, what would be sensible to take forward. <laughs> and we really now have a clear understanding of what the perceived opportunities and barriers are, and that's going to be consolidated to this white paper that I would commend you to read, and we'll have a huge amount more detail than I've presented today. <laughs>